By October 28, 5,000 North Korean soldiers are set to be deployed to the Kursk region. These are likely troops from the so-called elite unit, according to the New York Times. On October 23, the first North Korean troops arrived in the Kursk region, with thousands more arriving each day since. Informed sources in Ukraine stated that by October 28, around 5,000 North Korean troops will be gathered in the Kursk region. According to the source, the troops are part of an elite unit of the Korean People's Army. They are being transported from Vladivostok on large Ilyushin IL-76 transport planes to a military airfield in western Russia and then taken to the combat zone. Currently, North Korean troops are concentrated only in the Kursk region. It is noted that the North Korean soldiers have not yet engaged in combat. It remains unclear what role they will play on the front lines. The NYT adds that it is uncertain how the North Korean military will affect the dynamics on the battlefield. North Korean forces have not participated in any war since the 1950s, raising questions about the capabilities of even their elite units. North Korea has sent troops to Russian territory. Intelligence reports indicate they have undergone training at four training grounds. The reported number of North Korean troops varies. Western intelligence and South Korea estimate about 3,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia. Ukrainian intelligence claims that North Korea has sent around 12,000 troops to Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the first North Korean soldiers would arrive in the combat zone on October 27 to 28. The fighters of the 82nd separate Bukovina Airborne Assault Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine liquidated Russian Marines in the Kursk region of Russia. It is known that these Russian criminals had previously executed Ukrainian soldiers. In a commentary for Channel 24, military expert, pilot instructor and retired colonel of the Armed Forces of Ukraine Roman Sivitan analyzed the actions of the Russians in the Pokrovsk direction. According to him, more than one brigade of Russian Marines has already been exposed in genocidal actions demonstrating photos and videos confirming these actions. These are war crimes with no statute of limitations. It was the 155th Brigade that was noticed in the executions and abuse of Ukrainian prisoners of war. Now they are really having a black day said Roman Svitan. However, they will have this black day until the end of their existence. They will no longer be able to surrender. The military expert added, Recall a group of Russian troops whose brigade has been accused of war crimes, has been destroyed by Ukrainian forces. It has been reported, prompting family members of the casualties to express their distress and anger on social media. During the war started by Russian President Vladimir Putin, Russia's 155th Marine Brigade of the Pacific Fleet has faced accusations of similarly executing Ukrainian prisoners. On October the 10th, personnel from the brigade overran Ukrainian drone operators in the west of the Kursk Oblast where Kiev's forces have staged an incursion since August the 6th, reportedly seizing hundreds of square miles of territory. In an incident that has sparked international outrage, Kiev says drone footage shows the nine captured Ukrainians being stripped, ordered to lie down and shot. Ukraine's 95th Airborne Assault Brigade in the Kursk region the enemy suffered significant losses in a battle with Ukrainian paratroopers. October the 16th was a black day in my life for me, wrote the woman next to an image she said was of the 155th Motorized Rifle Brigade, 3rd Battalion, 4th Company, 3rd Platoon. It was captioned Ekaterina Badugo. Remember these faces, the post added, describing them as heroes who repelled a Ukrainian attack near the village of Sudza, which Kiev's forces have captured. They all gave their lives for you and me. My husband, who is in the lower left corner, among others, I will be proud of you for the rest of my life. I promise. The VK Post added, the post had received over 2,000 views and a number of comments, including one that read, when will it end? Our poor men. Another urged Russians to just leave Ukrainian territory and no one will die at all.
Roman Civitan noted that the first units of North Korean troops will definitely enter the combat contact line in Kursk since they have been undergoing training for a long time. This is mainly the command staff for deployment to the combat contact line. Then there will be a return back to continue training our personnel, these thousands who may appear on our front in some time, noted Civitan. I think that they will be closely watched now so as not to give them the opportunity to complete the training of personnel. They will have to be destroyed. The mechanisms exist, the military expert emphasized. In the Russian Federation, panic is growing, caused by the fact that prisoners who were amnestied for participation in the so-called special operation in Ukraine are returning from the front, against the backdrop of this event, the number of rapes has sharply increased, writes the TG channel, Mazamo Baikam, with reference to data from the Judicial Department at the Supreme Court of the Russian Federation. It is also emphasized that, looking at the published statistics and charts of crime growth, the increase in the number of those convicted under the article on violent sexual acts committed under aggravating circumstances is especially noticeable. The indicator of such violations of the criminal code of the Russian Federation has grown by 51%. In addition, special attention is paid to the fact that an even greater increase was recorded under the most serious part of this article, under which repeat rapists and violent acts against children are tried. The increase in this type of crime increased by 77.4%, that is, from 71 to 126 convicted persons. It is worth noting that the increase in the number of rapes, as well as other particularly serious crimes in the Russian Federation, is, of course, directly affected by the return from the front of former prisoners who received a pardon personally from the Russian dictator Putin for agreeing to participate in the war against the Ukrainian people. The consequences of this frankly cynical and unreasonable policy of the Kremlin leader, as we see from the published graphs, are reflected not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia itself. The deployment of conscripts is a thorny issue in Russia. That's partly because of Russian President Vladimir Putin's repeated promises that they would not be sent to fight, but also due to fact that the mothers and wives of soldiers have traditionally been an influential voice inside the country where dissent is now almost non-existent and many are expressing their anger. The treatment of conscripts has been a political third rail in the past for Russia. During the Soviet war in Afghanistan in the 1980s and Russia's war in the breakaway Republic of Chechnya, the mothers of conscripts mobilized to campaign against the abuse of conscripts. While Russian civil society has largely been defanged under Putin, the treatment of conscripts is still a sensitive issue for families. Avoiding the draft is easier for the sons of the wealthier and politically privileged.